everyone welcome back to the channel and first off I need to apologize for the um, for the mess that I kind of have behind me the stuff's all kind of just here because I'm kind of rearranging my room again down here trying to get it more set up not just for retro gaming and gaming in general but recording because right now I have to move stuff out of the way when I set up my camera move stuff again when I want to shift cameras which is why I don't do too many multi-camera angle shots it's all just wherever the camera's at. So yeah, this video is mainly gonna be me talking about showing some stuff that I picked up while thrifting over the course of the past few months. I haven't gone too often. I've had a few garage sales, uh, Google once or twice, but nothing too major just because I wanted to, I need to rebuild my shelves first before I add games. And I also need to rebuild them because they're starting to sag a little bit because I uh, built them wrong and also because I'm, I might be moving the shelf I don't know yet because I'm still rearranging this room through how I like it for recording and gaming and also because of not really a technical issue this time but a employee issue um, I don't have that much footage of uh, too much and no it's not because I don't have employees in the vast you know empire that is definitely casual PCs um, the past few times I've gone to a Goodwill since my last uh, recording, um, I don't remember if I mentioned this in the last one, I don't think I did, but the time right before, the time I went to actually get the external shot of the Goodwill, um, I was stopped by an employee of Goodwill while I was recording, and he got adamant and on my case about me recording. So it's against company policy. It's, I, mean, I can't do it. I'm not allowed to. It's against the rules of law. And I said, I don't remember there ever being a thing like this because I've seen several YouTubers do videos like this where they go to Goodwills. And I kind of tried to explain to him that I have a small YouTube channel where I'm trying to get it to grow and that kind of stuff. And he said, no, that's not what's going on. You work for a rival thrift store. You're just trying to get the scoop on how we do our, you know, our stuff. You know, okay, I guess I work for a different thrift company. I guess, I don't know. So every time I would go, which I've only gone, you know, maybe a handful, about six, seven times since then, uh, he wouldn't, he wasn't purposed. He was like, he wasn't following me, like, you know, horror movie level, but every time I looked, he was looking over shelves and kind of in the same area where I was. And so it got to the point where I didn't take my phone with me. I just left it in my car. Um, which is fine because I really didn't find too much stuff at the Goodwills. There hasn't really been too much. Um, but I did pick some stuff up this last time. And even between then and now, I even picked up something really cool that I want to show at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. But right now, I'll show you this, this, some of the footage I have, including a couple new places I've been. So check it out.
Okay, so let's take a look at some of the stuff that I picked up from thrifting. I think the coolest thing I've picked up so far has got to be anything involving one of my favorite video games, which is Fallout New Vegas, and that is playing cards. Um, this is actually the first Fallout themed merchandise I've found in a, in a thrift store. Um, I was really excited to grab this actually because it's, it's one of my favorite games. It's not sealed or nothing, so I don't have to worry about you know it being unsealed. I don't care. It's Fallout. It's awesome. Although I couldn't help and not get the world's cutest freaking Atari 2600. I don't remember who I saw review one of these, and I want to review it too. We have Centipede, Pong, Missile Command, Breakout, Asteroids, uh, Millipede, Tempest, Warlords, and Combat, and um, that's going to be adorable. It says high resolution, uh, classic console TV. I don't know how high resolution that can be being, you know, the size of Poji's stamp, but we'll see it when I review it. Speaking of Ataris, um, picked up another Atari 2600 console. Uh, this was at a farmhouse I stopped at. It was a kind of a last second thing. I saw they had a, uh, yard sale thing. And I just kind of asked if they had any old computers or consoles, video game stuff, because I normally do when I stop by garage sales, uh, just to see if there is any. Because there is somebody else in my area that's collecting computers. But from what I'm hearing, they scrap them. Like, destroy them, scrap them for gold, that kind of stuff. I don't. I actually care. Uh, and she pulled this out of a box. No cords, no other cables, no games. Uh, just the RF cable. Uh, looks, she says it's been sitting in the shed for years, and it looks like it. It is disgusting. In fact, I'm going to wash my hands when I put this down. If it works, I'm going to test it out here after a bit, um, someday. Maybe for a video. I'm going to test it out, and if it does work, I'm going to mod this. I'm going to, this is going to be the one that I mod. I'm going to do a composite mod. Um, I've seen a couple other cool mods for these. There's a, an LED power mod. That you just put an LED right here that way you know if it's working or not, or on at least. Um, do a composite mod, uh, that kind of stuff to it. Since this cable's intact, I'm going to clean it up and put on my other Atari 2600. And I know I just did the video where I replaced it with a coaxial cable. Uh, I really haven't had any issues with it, except for the fact it's too short. Um, never thought that would be a problem, but it was. It's uh, too short for the TV I want to hook it up to, so... I kind of need to use a longer cable and, well, that would be a good one right here, maybe. So, let's see if it works. Can't, admit, can't forget the stack of games that I have, which um, I don't think I have on my shelf already, which is another reason why I need to rebuild my shelves, but I have an Inbox N64 game, finally. And it's actually a game that I used to have and I don't have anymore, which now I do. Um, this is actually a really hilarious little story. Um, I have a local game store that's kind of local to me. Uh, they sell everything. Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons uh, stuff. And they also sell a bunch of video games. And like they have Atari, NES, Play PlayStation. They don't carry anything newer than, I believe, PS2, GameCube era. That's, you know, everything after that, that's all pawn shop stuff, they said. But anything older than that, they'll sell. This was only five bucks. I was surprised that an in-box N64 game was five bucks when I asked them that, because a lot of the prices were pretty cheap too. Like I think I got uh, there's a couple of NES games I got for like five or six bucks each. Um, obviously, some of their games are like I think a couple that were 20, 30 bucks, but a lot of their more common games was like five, including this. And he said, "Well, think about it. It's Star Wars Rogue Squadron. What N64 gamer didn't have that?" He goes, "It's the most common box game you're gonna find." I said, "Fair enough." Um, he also had another inbox game right next to it that was $100. Uh, that was actually in worse shape, but it was a game that, he's, that was a lot rarer. So, yeah. A huge stack of Wii games. Nothing really special. Uh, Lego Harry Potter. Uh, Cabela's African Hunt. Country Dance. Ooh, it's the Walmart Exclusive Edition. That'll be fun. Uh, shovelware like Ford's Off-Road Racing. I kind of want to try this, actually. That might be a video I do soon. Uh, Cabela's Legendary Haunts. Uh, Tangled. Nothing really special. Oh, 
Another silverware title. Jeep Thrills. God, that's another game I kinda wanna play too. It just seems so like highly genetic. Wii Wheel Compatible. I hope a Wii game about racing is compatible with a piece of plastic. A couple PS3 titles. Like I don't I'm not really into collecting PS3 stuff. Um I I it, I just now, like a couple within the past few months anyway, got a PS3. Just because I it was a console I ignored because I had the Xbox 360 and it was overpriced in my opinion and besides the fact I played Blu-ray movies, we had a Blu-ray player, so there's really no need to get one. And a lot of the exclusives I really weren't wasn't interested in. But, you know, I picked up a box of PS3 games at garage sale, you know, ages ago. They've been sitting on my shelf in a box. I've never, you know, did anything with them. I came across a PS3 at a garage sale that, you know, it didn't work because somebody had torn apart the disk drive. But then I picked up another PS3 from somebody that was just getting rid of it, and it works perfect. I just had to reformat it. So, unless it's a game that actually interests me, like Modern Warfare 2 or Dark Souls or... And Ratchet and Clank should be pretty fun. You know, I'll try them. A couple of Xbox, Xbox 360, and a PS2 style. Um, games I've actually been looking for. Like, Warcraft Legends. I've actually been looking for that game. That's one of the uh, Tomb Raiders I don't have. Um, Halo 4, sadly I already have that, which was annoying. That's kind of why I need to go through my shelves. And two of the Burger King games. Um, I, uh, thought I had, uh, Sneak King, which is why I kind of was looking for these. I don't have Sneak King. I don't know why I don't have it, because I have a bunch of the other cheaper junk Xbox 360 titles. So yeah, uh, Pocket Bike Racer and Big Bumpin'. So I'm gonna, I don't, I almost want to play these. Xbox and Xbox 360 version. Sweet. Why, could, why didn't more games do that? Where you had the Xbox 360 enhanced, like, enhanced version, and then the version for the Xbox. I mean, the Xbox was still a relevant console when the 360 launched, so why not? But yeah, I'll put these on my shelf at some point. Uh, oh. Okay, I don't have OCD when it comes to game cases. Like, I don't mind having Greatest Hits, or Player's Choice, or Platinum Hits on my shelf mixed in with my other games. But this is annoying. They don't say 360 on it. They just say Xbox. Where are these going to go? I picked up a couple of PC games, which I think you saw in uh, Goodwill. Oregon Trail 3rd Edition and World in Conflict. Annoyingly, I probably should have opened these up a little further. Uh, I did see that it had their it had some the CDs in it. Now, this is missing CD2. And this is missing the main CD. Which is fine because I actually looked it up. And I can download... All of the CDs for this as abandonware, which is awesome. And apparently, I can do the same for this game because it's abandonware also, and it doesn't need online activation. Okay. I don't really pick up board games, and I kind of hope I can get that sticker off without destroying it. But Trivial Pursuit Year in Review 1992, just so so close to the year I was born. Uh, I actually hope everything's in here because I would absolutely love to play this at some point. Uh, not on the channel, no, because, you know, that's not a computer game or console game or anything, so. But, you know, just me and the wife or something. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. I've actually been looking for, um, not this one specifically, but just Roller Coaster Tycoon games because, holy crap, are these fun games. You basically get to play God. I mean, you can in Sims and SimCity too, but this kind of gives a nice Final Destination twist to it. No, I'm not sadistic. So this is actually a little bit more of a personal thing because of um, uh, because of where I live. I live in Iowa, you know, in the Midwest. Our state's not famous for much except for Superman, uh, Bridger Madison County, Ashton Kutcher, and um, Gateway 2000 PCs. Yes, I know that our state's more famous for more than that, but that's the only four top off of my head. Uh, this is a, a CD of like, uh, just highlights 40 years of uh, a radio broadcaster that was, um, he, he was very well known. Um, he basically, he was on the radio, he was on the radio for like 40 years. Um, 
sometime in the mid or mid fifties or something. Um, every once in a while, your the radio stations will play like little excerpts from his from way back in the day. So I thought it was really cool that I found you know basically he he took notes everywhere he went, and he would always you know give like world you know world news to small town Iowa. It was actually really cool. Like I said, <laughs> almost sound great down here. So I mentioned before. Um, I don't remember which video it was, but I know I did. That I once that I have a local scrapyard that I go to, and I look for retro PC parts. I don't find much. Once in a while, I might find like a, a an Sonic sound card or a Trident video card. Just you know, low end stuff from you know low end computers. Oh, OE, mostly old, modern OEM stuff. Because I have a somewhat of a small agreement with the manager, because they don't normally let anything get taken out. Once it's in there, it's gold scrap. Um, so basically, if I want to, you know, acquire any parts from there, I either have to take in parts equal value in terms of gold weight, or I have to take, take in complete towers to swap out a tower, or I have to buy it out for gold scrap price, which, you know, it's not much. Like, I think I walked out with a stack of, like, sound, like these cards one day for, like, five bucks. A lot of it I brought back because I'm, well, it didn't work because it was just thrown in the bins because those guys don't care. They literally will rip and tear stuff. Um, so one day I stopped in there and they just got done dumping the bins. Um, and I talked to the guy. He said, well, we dumped the bins, but there's a couple stragglers on the bottom of the bin that got stuck there. So I go so I go in, I take in a bunch of junk modern parts, you know, Windows 7, Windows 8 stuff. And at the bottom of the bin, I saw a ISA slot card edge is 8-bit and I do have the XP clone that I have that takes 8-bit stuff and I was like well maybe it'll you know, maybe it'll be something and my first thought was maybe it was a network card which I don't have 8-bit network card I have 16-bit but not 8-bit oddly um so I took it to work here and <laughs> it was covered in mud I didn't know what it was I just saw that an 8-bit ISA slot And the IO shield is gone. No big deal. Um, until I sprayed it off with water and I about dropped what this is. Because I never thought I would ever see one of these in person, let alone hold one. And even, even less so have one in my collection. That is an ad lib gold. This is one of those like white whale things that I never thought I would ever collect or even search for because of how expensive they can be on eBay. But I found one in a scrap bin in the middle of Iowa. Does it work? I don't know. Because it's got a capacitor broken off right up here. And that one right there is, uh, I can see the legs being pulled out. So I need to replace these two capacitors. Luckily there was a guy on Facebook who actually was showing off a boxed version he has of one of these with all the software and even, he even had the rare daughter board and I asked him very nicely and basically pleaded pretty pretty pleased with sugar on top if he could send me high quality photos of these two areas uh, so I knew what the value was for the capacitor I assumed they were the same as the other ones on here but I didn't want to just assume and put the wrong part on here and fancy smoke and he happily obliged he took you know very high quality photos and sent them to me uh, so now I know the values of the capacitors, so I'm going to replace it and see if this thing works. If it does work, it's going to my XT clone. It's going to be awesome. So yeah, <laughs> I'm really excited about this. Uh, like I said, not a, whole lot of, not a whole lot of great stuff, but obviously the highlight was the AdLib Gold. That's the coolest thing I've ever come across anywhere while thrifting. I think it's almost right up there with finding the NES in the box uh, that I have on my shelf over there which is just, it's something I never expected to find while collecting. And a lot of the stuff I don't ever expect to find while collecting. But I'm really glad I, I was there that day because otherwise that might have got buried by some other computer parts and got tossed away. So yeah, with that being said, uh, I'm going to be rebuilding my shelves to hold all my games again. Um, get this area cleaned up again because I'm... Um, oh, I also almost forgot. I found a Commodore monitor. It's nothing uh, special, it's the uh, 1802 monitor, but it does have LCA um, composite and monochrome input. It needs um, the main selector switch here replaced. It's really crunchy and sketchy, but you know, that's a repair project for future video. 
Anyway, um, so I'm going to begin the stuff put away at some point in the future. If there's any of these games you want to see me review, or at least talk about, like the shovelware for Wii, I'll torture myself with those. I'll stick myself to, <laughs> to horrible masochist levels of horrible games for your entertainment and enjoyment. Why not? I have Carnival Games for Wii. I have M&M's Kart Racer for Wii. I have, I have Chicken Shoot for Wii. You know, NFL Blitz for Xbox. I have Resident Evil 6 on Xbox 360. And I'm only saying that's a that's a torturous game because of uh, Shiva. Or is it? Or Shiva in 5. Um, okay, correction. I'm an idiot. Shiva's in 5. So never mind. That joke just fell flat on his face. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, hit the like button. Um, subscribe if you want to. It helps the channel grow. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload more content. Um, and if there's any of these games, again, you want to see me review, talk about, or torture myself with, put them down in the comments and I'll pop it in and play it. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.